Hello, Algebra 2 CP students. Hopefully you're doing A-OK. -okay. I wasn't planning on doing this originally, but I think it is ultimately for the best and will only help you if I just create a short little video of me doing a couple problems from the test review. I have seven problems in particular that I'd like to get through. I think ultimately it will just help prepare you for that summative and help you uh, study and hopefully you'll do well when it comes to the summative assessment on radical and complex number operations later this week. All right. So like I said, I have seven problems that I'd like to go through with you from the test review. They're just taken directly from the review. It's the same problems that I plan on doing in class for the group that will see me in class. Um, and we're going to start with this problem right here. This is number four on the test review. I think the problems that I've sampled are not only a great review of all the topics we've talked about, but also are very uh, analogous and very um, indicative of problems that you will see on the actual assessment. All right. They mirror the difficulty. So starting with this first problem here, right? This is one of our transformer type of problems where they don't look like like terms. I love using that phrase because I'm a big nerd. They don't look like like terms at the start, but then when we simplify them and deal with them, we find, ooh, these things actually can be combined in some way. So if I start with these uh, radicals here, if I start breaking these down, we again want to find the biggest perfect square factor that goes into something like the square root of 45, and that would be the square root of 9 times the square root of 5, because 9 times 5 is 45, and 9 is a perfect square. The square root of 9 is 3, so I would say that this is negative 3 times 3 times the square root of 5, or in other words, negative 9 times the square root of 5. Hopefully that makes sense how we did that. Notice I broke down 45 into 9 and 5 because 9, again, is a perfect square. I didn't pick something like 15 and 3 because 15 or 3 are not perfect squares, right? That doesn't help us get anywhere. The square root of 9 being 3, though, that does help us get somewhere because then we just take that square root and we're able to combine it with this other negative 3 outside the radical. Now let's deal with the second piece here. I'm going to carry down the minus sign. So it's just up there. I have 1 half times square root of 20 we can break down with perfect squares to be the square root of 4 times the square root of 5. Square root of 4 is 2 so I get 1 half times 2 times the square root of 5. Half of 2 is 1 so we just get minus 1 square root of 5. Okie doke. And if I have negative 9 square roots of 5 minus an additional square root of 5 just like if I had negative 9x minus 1x we would say we have negative 10 of them. Negative 10 square roots of 5. And there we go. All right. It's a typical transformer style problem where we got to simplify those like terms and then combine them at the end. All right. Now, let's move into some powers of i's. Remember, we talked about powers of i's where uh, it follows this sort of cyclic pattern. It's a cycle where we have that uh, i to the first is i. i squared is negative 1 i to the third is negative i, and i to the fourth is 1. And then the, this pattern, as we've observed in class, just repeats. So i to the fifth goes back up to i, i to the sixth is here, i to the seventh is here, i to the eighth is here, and so on. Okay. So we can use that pattern to solve stuff like this. If I said to simplify i to the eleventh times i to the tenth. Well, what I recommend in dealing with problems like this is first to apply your law of exponents to sort of condense it down to just one thing. i to the 11th times i to the 10th, we're multiplying the same basis, so I would add the exponents to say, well, altogether, if there are 11 i's being multiplied in a big old chain right here, and 10 i's being multiplied together in a chain here, then altogether there would be 21 of them being multiplied. And then just using our pattern here, we could say, well, i to the 21st would be equal to i. How do I figure that out? Well, you could either count, physically count up there and say, well, this is 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. It takes a long time, but you could do it. Uh, the other thing you could do is count by 4s because you know every multiple of 4 ends here. So what's the biggest multiple of 4 we can get to 21 without going over? That would be 20 because 4 times 5 is 20. And then just add one more. You'll get back up to the top of the pattern. That's another way you could do it. You could also divide 21 by 4 with a calculator and you would end up a, with a remainder of 0.25 and because you have a remainder of 0.25 that means you'd have one fourth left over and end up at here at this position in the chart right if we had two fourths left over or 0.5 we'd be here three fourths or 0.75 would be here and no remainder would bring us right to this multiple of four 
So there's three different ways of how you could do that. All right. Going along with that, something like, consider something like this. Problem number 10 looks like this. We have 9i to the 34th plus 8i to the 80th, which looks a little scary at first glance. But all we really need to do is just evaluate i to the 34th and substitute it, evaluate i to the 80th and substitute it, and then just simplify. So i to the 34th, using our pattern, closest multiple of 4 we can get is 32. 33 would be here, and 34 would be here, so we could say this is negative 1. i to the 80th, 80 is a multiple of 4, because if you count by 4s, you'll get 20 times 4, which is 80, so that's just 1. And then this really just turns into negative 9, that's negative 1 times 9, plus 8, that's 1 times 8, and negative 9 plus 8 is negative 1. So it looks a little scary, but once you try to tackle it, it's really not so bad. Okay. Hopefully not too bad so far. We had simplifying radicals and powers of i. Then we started getting into the complex number and radical operations, like multiplying radicals and adding and subtracting, dividing complex numbers. So let's go through that. Problem number 14 is on subtracting complex numbers. But it throws a little twist in there that I think is kind of cool. If I have negative th 2 times 3 minus 4i minus 9 minus i. Consider something like that, right? It is pretty much a straightforward subtraction here, but before we do that, there, it gives a little extra step for us at the beginning of the problem where I need to distribute this negative 2 to just clean things up a little bit. Not too tricky. This is going to be negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. Negative 2 times negative 4i, positive 8i. And then I'm just going to say this is minus my 9 minus i. As I've said in class a couple times, I think the biggest issue with these subtraction problems where students get mixed up is forgetting that this negative applies to both this 9 and this minus i. So just read it from left to right like a sentence, and that mistake usually doesn't occur. I have negative 6 minus 9. Negative 6 take away 9 more is going to be negative 15. And then I have 18i minus negative i. Do you see that? So minus negative will become positive. 8i plus one more i will make plus 9i. And there's our answer in a plus bi form. Okay, so hopefully that's not too bad. After that, we went into with problem 17 is multiplying some radicals together. So let's make sure we remember how to do that. I have 5 times the square root of negative 12 times 3 times the square root of negative 2. Remember the age-old expression that we keep repeating. It even rhymes, so it's easy to remember. Simplify before you multiply. And the exact same thing is true here. We see those negative square roots. When we see those negative square roots, what do we do first? I can already hear you saying we pop out the i. Absolutely. We take out that imaginary component, right? So that leaves us with the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 12, right? We can break down the square root of 12 to say this is 5 times i, because that's the square root of negative 1, times the square root of 12. Let's break that down to the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. It's the biggest perfect square. The square root of 4 is 2, so I get 5 times i times 2 times the square root of 3, or altogether 10i square root of 3 is how we can simplify this first piece before we start multiplying. Hopefully we're A-OK -okay with that. Uh, after that, we can then go into the second one. Second piece doesn't have much simplifying to do. We can't really break down the square root of 2, but I can certainly take out that i, take out the imaginary component, and say this is, just to simplify it way down here, 3i rad 2. All right, hopefully that makes sense. Now that I've simplified before I multiplied, I can go ahead and multiply these together and not have to worry about the simplifying later. Watch. 10 times 3 is going to be 30. Remember, outside stuff multiplies with outside stuff, and inside stuff multiplies with inside stuff. 10 times 3 is 30. i times i is i squared. Don't forget about that. And then the square root of 3 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 6, right? 3 times 2. We can't simplify the square root of 6 with perfect squares. Oh, it's a little, get distracted, a little ladybug walking by. See, you can make a little cameo appearance. Maybe we'll start walking again, we'll see. Sorry, a scary ladybug. Uh, <laughs> I squared is negative 1, so we can say now this is 30 times negative 1 times the square root of 6. 
and 30 times negative 1 is going to be negative 30 rad 6. All right. Hopefully that makes sense how we did that. Yes? Cool. Uh, after that, how about just some straight old, good old-fashioned multiplying complex numbers? We'll do that up here. If I have 5 minus 2i times negative 7 plus 3i. Right? Just a good old-fashioned distribution of complex numbers. All right. Move my ladybug friend out of the way. What I do first is I want to do a little first outer inner last, right? The distributive property in order to multiply these two things together. I'm going to first do 5 times negative 7 is negative 35. Right? That's my first multiplication. The outer multiplication, I'm going to do 5 times 3i is plus 15i. Inner multiplication now, negative 2i times negative 7 is going to be positive 14i. And last multiplication now, negative 2i times 3i is going to be negative 6i squared. Please do not forget the i squared. That is definitely the number one most common mistake that we see is i times i is i squared. A lot of students tend to just leave it as i. It's just like x times x would be x squared. Okay? Now I go forward from here and I could say, ooh, well... Buggy's on the move again. I don't want it to like get too far. Uh, there we go. This we say, ooh, well, negative six i squared. We know i squared is negative one. So this is really just going to become negative six times negative one, which is positive six. So we have negative thirty-five. Here I have a positive six. We can combine these two like terms in here. Fifteen i's plus fourteen more makes twenty-nine of them. So hopefully it makes sense as to how we got here. And then last, but most certainly not least, I can just finish off this problem by saying, combine my two like terms here, negative 35 plus 6 is negative 29 plus 29i. Kind of cool that we get this, kind of the same two numbers here. Kind of neat. All right. Hopefully no questions about that. Hopefully making sense. That's good. That's good. This guy is on the move. He was camera shy when he was on camera. Let's see if I can put him here and he'll be on the move. All right. He was just he was just zooming along there. All right. Last but not least, I don't know if some of you get creeped out by insects and ladybugs. Generally, bugs aren't too bad for me. I think ladybugs are an exception where I'd, I'm not really afraid of them at all. Uh, I don't like bees, though. I do not like bees at all. Or flies. Flies are just gross. Anyway, we're getting off topic. Let's go back to uh, math. We have one more problem to get through. It's our last pro division problem over here. I don't know if our ladybug friends is going to be shy or start walking. Oh, oh, there he goes. He's moving a little bit. Uh, let's do our last problem. Ready? 24. Oh, he's like, get me out of here. Get me, get me away from the math. Give me a no, ladybug. Come towards the math. What's so scary about it? Okay, we got. Ready? This guy wants to get as far away from this problem as possible. 5 minus 9i, all divided by 4 plus the square root of negative 4. Okay, consider something like that. All right, consider something like that. Get up there. Ah, now he's wandered away. I don't want him to disappear, though. I want to stay, uh, stay on this paper. No, stay on the paper, please. All right, he's coming back. Okay, you can come back. Uh, anyway. Just open the blinds. This is becoming a disaster. Uh, here we go. He's on the hover cam now. You can't see him. He's behind here. He's crawling up the hover cam. He's going to start getting in the light here. Come on. On the paper. Come on the paper. There we go. All right. Very good. Very good. Uh, well, what I would do here is I would notice, ooh, the square root of negative 4. Well, what's the square root of positive 4? The square root of positive 4 is 2. So therefore, the square root of negative 4 would just be 2i, right? You can replace this with 2i, and we can rewrite this as 5 minus 9i over 4 plus 2i, right? Come on. There we go. Now I can go forward from here. This is very distracting. I can go forward from here, and I could say, well... I need to multiply both the numerator and denominator by something in order to eliminate all those imaginary components from the denominator. 
So what am I going to multiply by? Well, in order to do that, I need to multiply by the complex conjugate. The complex conjugate of 4 plus 2i is 4 minus 2i. We just change the sign of that i component, right? That imaginary component, just change the sign. Okay? So the sun's shining on me now that I have disturbed the blinds and all that. I'm getting blinded over here. I got bugs. I got sun in my eyes. We're still making it through this problem, though. Now I distribute, right? In the denominator, notice what's going to happen. We'll stick with the denominator first. 4 plus 2i times 4 minus 2i. We would distribute. 4 times 4 is 16. 4 times negative 2i is minus 8i. 2i times 4 plus 8i. And that's what we want to see, right? We want to see that cancellation occurring. And then lastly, 2i times negative 2i is negative 4i squared. All right, keep in mind, i times i is i squared. Continuing with the denominator for just a moment, again, we want to see that cancellation. That's the whole point of multiplying by the complex conjugate so those things cancel out in the denominator. Now, this negative 4i squared we know is the same as negative 4 times negative 1, which is positive 4, and 16 plus 4 will make 20. So hopefully that makes sense as well. Now we look at the numerator and just try to work with that. I get 5 times 4 is 20. 5 times negative 2i minus 10i. Negative 9i times 4 minus 36i. Negative 9i times negative 2i. Ah, negative time. <laughs> Ladybug made a sudden motion there. Uh, <laughs> I thought I had it under control. Negative 9i times negative 2i is going to be positive 18i squared. Right? Don't forget, i squared is negative 1. Okay? Since we know i squared is negative 1, like I just mentioned, we know that 18i squared will be minus 18. So combining with our real numbers here, oh, just fell on the paper. Combining with our real numbers here, 20 minus 18, if you notice, 20 minus 18 is 2. And then my i's, I have negative 10i minus 36i is negative 46i. Now I'm going to break apart my fraction here and just try to represent it in my a plus bi form. We get 2 over 20 minus 46 over 20, 46i over 20. And then last but not least, we can just reduce the fractions to the best of our ability here. 2 over 20, we can reduce down to 1 over 10. And then negative 46i over 20, we can make minus, reduce both by a factor of 2, 23i over 10. That's as simple as we can get those fractions, so we are done. I don't know if you can see the bug. Oh, yeah, you can right there. Get out of there. We are done. Oh, it's flying. Get away from me. Oh, I probably just flinched like really bad and very embarrassing. All right, it's up over there. We can go ahead and uh, deal with that later. All right, I got out of the way for now. <laughs> just wanted to get away from the math. All right, anyway, that was uh, more distracting than I thought it would be. And I'm now getting blinded because I disturbed this curtain that's blocking the sun from blinding me. But at least we made it through this test review. So just a nice little recap. Simplifying radicals. Break down first. Combine the like terms. Powers of i, we use our chart, or we could use a calculator to figure out where any power of i falls on this particular thing. Then I have my subtracting complex numbers. Little twist here where we had a little distributing at the start, but still pretty standard. Multiplying complex numbers, remember that we just uh, do first, outer, inner, last, the distributive property, and that i squared is negative 1. Simplifying uh, before we multiplying, very important when multiplying square roots because it saves us a lot of headache in the end. Again, this i squared came up here, and the i squared comes up one more time right here, i squared being negative 1. After we multiply by the complex conjugate, we should always end up with just a regular old number in the denominator. And then a little first outer inner last in the numerator, group together our terms, and simplify as best we can. All right. Hopefully this was a helpful 20-minute or so review for you, uh, complete with many distractions. But... Good luck studying. If you need anything else from me, please do not hesitate to reach out. I also invite the group that is not participating in an in-person lesson on Wednesday because it is uh, you know, only half the class. Uh, you are more than welcome to attend virtually if you want to. 
And I also invite the group that is attending in person on Wednesday, the B group, to watch this video if you feel like you need another refresher. All right, and you just want to see me flail at the sight of a ladybug flying in my face. Thank you so much for your attention and focus today. I hope you have a great day and good luck. All right, take care.